This is called Chat with an Academy Scientist. And although today I'm not speaking with people that you might consider scientists in the traditional sense, I am talking to some folks that are experts or practically scientists at what they do, which is a very special form of art I like to call upcycling. Um, but I would like to introduce you all to some guest artists that helped us develop our Built for Speed exhibit here at the Academy. Uh, this is Richard and Judith Lang. Hello. Hello. So welcome to Thank chat with so. an Academy scientist. So can you explain to us what is what is your kind of art? How did you get involved in the Academy? What did they see that uh, that brought them to ask you to come and help us with this exhibit? Well, we've been artists for 40 years doing traditional painting and drawing. And was it 14 years ago? Mm -hmm. We started picking up trash off the beach, and it was very beautiful in a certain way. Well, that's kind of here. We brought some of the things here. You can have a look in just a minute, but uh, we found it to be a beautiful material for making art. So that was 14 years ago. Uh huh. We've come to be known as the plastic people because we've become quite notorious in our collecting. But I want to uh, give a tip of the hat to the scientific process because. We are both also very interested in the scientific endeavor and are very rigorous. When we go to the beach, we bring back big big bags of the stuff. You can see some of our collecting uh, efforts here. And then we bring it home, and we, first of all, sort it according to color and kind. And this kind of categorization is scientifically rigorous. We put all the red ah. together, all the blue together. That's how we were able to do the exhibition for the Built for Speed, with such ease because we had boxes full of red, blue, gotcha. all of them. And we have colors. an image of that a little later in the slideshow if you want to see it. But uh, just to give you an idea of some of the work that the Langs have done in the past, um, here's some nice organizations of color. It looks like it's a little broken up right now. Do you think I should, I don't know if I should switch it back. Would that help, do you think? I'll do one switch here. You can sort of see how it works. Hang on just a moment. And we'll see if we can get a full image here. All right, it's a little off. There's your full image up there. It looks like you really do sort it and kind of make no, <laughs> some really I'm, beautiful art, actually. The little Barbie hand and the number three hand were found on the same day. And so because we're both artists, I mean, how can you not think of Michelangelo and uh, and the creation and what we're creating? So Yeah, this almost looks like a delicious plate of Lucky Charms or something, <laughs> but not not quite that. Not quite that. Not quite that. Um, these pieces. So uh, well, part of our practice is to identify what we found. And so these little round things that are in the bowl, does anyone know what those are? Oh, the inside they, of Beanie Babies? No, That's a good guess. That's babies. a really, really great But it's also how plastic is shipped from one place to another. Uh, plastic is made in these great refractory towers, and they gasify... Um, fossil fuels, and these little plastic pellets rain down, and they gather them up, and that's how they make everything from car bumpers to heart valves. Wow. Do you have some examples of we those We do. Right that here? could be passed could around. Pass yeah. around? Yeah. So go ahead and take a look. This is an example of uh, some of that beach debris and some of those little, would they be called almost like a uh, They're nurdle? called nurdles. They're and called maybe if nurdles. you could keep that closed just so it doesn't end up all over the place. They're called nurdles or pre productive pre-production plastic pellets, or they have a very beautiful uh, romantic name. They're called Mermaid's Tears. Oh, uh, if I were a mermaid, I'd be very sad to find that in my dinner, I think. <laughs> Definitely. Unfortunately, they're so small that at first when we started our collecting, of course, we see the brightly colored, the big pieces. And one day, Richard had injured her ba his back, and it involves our collecting is bending over, picking up, bending over, picking up. And this day, he couldn't bend over and pick up. So he said, I know. I'm going to just take a little bit of the sand and see what it would mean to really clean the beach. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just pick up everything I could. And these tiny little pellets, which we'd never seen before, wow. never heard of, he had a handful. And we went home and we did what we often do. We do research on the Internet, and we were able to find plastic pellets, and from that unfolded wow. a whole investigation for us. And yeah. we found a scientist at Tokyo University who has been studying these things and been doing chemical analysis on these things, and it turns out they're very ab absorptive. Of, so they, like, uh, sponge things in, like yes. if you had a kitchen sponge, it would right. absorb yeah. the stuff exactly. around it. Yeah, exactly. So these absorb 
chemicals, chemicals in the water. Yeah, bad, bad actually PCBs, DDT all get absorbed into those little pellets. Right. And, and unfortunately, the fish enjoy those little pellets. They Aww. think that they maybe are fish eggs. And so it's one way that these chemicals actually enter into the, into our bloodstreams because wow. the fish eat it, the bigger fish eat the smaller fish, and on up the food chain it goes. And that relates quite a bit, actually, to the exhibit. So how many of you have been to our Built for Speed exhibit so far? Okay, it's that thing in the middle. There's a big glass room, and you'll see that there are three tall sort of kiosks. These are our ocean action kiosks, and these are a really good message. Could you tell us a little bit about these kiosks, what the messages are for these? Sure. The first one is just about, um, not the first one, yeah, the first one up on, the, uh, on that side is about uh, pouring stuff down the drain. And when you wash out a paintbrush, when you dump your unused medicine in the toilet, when all of the stuff eventually enters the ocean and enters the food chain. So that's what that first station is about. Okay. The middle uh, station there is all derelict fishing gear. Everything, all of the buoys and the netting is all stuff that has washed up onto the beach. Uh, Kehoe Beach and the Point Reyes National Seashore where we have collected all of the items that are presented in our display. And that particular... Uh, kiosk uh, is talking about the problem of sustainable fishing and overfishing. Ah, and that's something that um, I'll remind you later. Do you like eating seafood? Because if you do, that's fine. You just have to eat the right seafood. and You can actually really influence the way that the ocean is going. And then we've got our third one, which is very much like what you work on uh, kind of in your other artwork. What's the, the last one about? Uh, it's the plastic pollution. It's called Pass on Plastic. And all of these beautiful multicolored, oh, there's, there's these bands, these inserts into the, into the uh, structures. And we had a great time curating the individual pieces there to create so these when you So when you go and look at the thing, people ask us, um, did you color this plastic? This is exactly how we find it. And wow. So are these some examples right here of yeah. some... Some plastic that you would find. Can I kind yeah, of bring please, these around? Yeah, please. It looks like a little beautiful tray yeah. of hors d'oeuvres. And you find all of this at Kehoe Beach? All of this Kehoe Beach. And not just Kehoe Beach, but 1,000 yeah. yards of one beach. That's a lot of stuff there. So this beach, you said uh, 1,000 yards. How many years have you been going to the same 1,000 yards no, to been, find this? It's been 14 years. 14 years. Well, we had our first date yeah. there. And, oh, okay. Oh, that would be a question for Mo and the guys who are putting together that orca skeleton. So a different spot than this spot. If you want to talk plastics, this is the place. Yeah, but how much, um, how much plastic would you say you found on the beaches? Oh, thousands of pounds. Uh, it's a seasonal phenomena during the winter from about November to March is what we call our high season. It's when the currents and the tides and the storms bring the plastic in. So you can see how much plastic there can be in a winter day. If perhaps you were to go there today, you'd say, these people are crazy. There's no plastic on that beach. And, of course, we can always find plastic because we're professional. Right. Oh, of course. But, but a yes. person just going, maybe an untrained eye, the, ba the beach would look pretty pristine. But in the wintertime, it can really look like this. Mm -hmm. So people ask us, where does this stuff come from? Are people throwing it on the beach? Um, where does it come from? All you have to do is the next time you're stuck in traffic on the freeway, just look to the edge of the road. Oh, and yeah. you'll see it. It won't look like this. It'll be spread out. But imagine a whole mile of what you're looking at. And that washes down the drain and out to sea. Wow. But you are able to make it into really beautiful work. Now, I'm a little curious. As far as your guess is, you probably spent some time on beaches, right? What do you think is the most common plastic? What are the most common items that you think these, uh, these artists are finding? Any guesses? What was that? Bottles. Bottles are very common. Yeah. Yeah. Any Bottles other guesses? Very Maybe you can guess a couple of bottle caps. Bottle yes, caps, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, so um, caps. I picked a couple of your artworks to show just some of the, 
the variety of things that you've found and sort of made into these really beautiful artwork. Um, but when you take a closer look, you really realize what they are. Mm -hmm. uh, Who knows what those little red triangles uh, are? Anyone have a guess? Okay. We didn't know either when we found the first one. We were totally mystified. This was a red rectangular shape. What? What is this? And then if we I found go like another this, one. You know what it is now? It's a snack stick, right? Right, right. Yeah, so yeah, those little, little single, cracker snack <laughs> single snack sticks. Oh, that. So what we really love is to, to take something as common as that as you find in the little craft candy snacks and to show what we found in a thousand yards of one beach. Over the years, we found over 550 of these on the beach. So yeah. imagine what's going on in the world. Now, as far as some things, um, I'm sure you find things that, just like that, you have no idea what they are. You've brought some uh, hard-to-identify things here today. Yeah, Do you want to, uh, to get our guests to try to help us figure yeah, out what they let's are? Let's give this first before okay. we give the clue. All right. So, so again, when we found the first for one you of guess. these pieces, we had no idea what it might be. Anyone else who wants to come help us guess? What is this mystery piece of plastic? You're welcome to come on over. We've got some other interesting things here as well. Let's get a good one here. Oh yeah, this is this is a pretty good one. Okay. If I if you want to try and guess this one? If I say bump 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 bump, you know what they are now? This one here. The, if yeah. I hold this one up. Is that from a road? Yes. Mm -hmm. These are the yeah. bumpies in the road. <laughs> oh. And they were invented by, one of the things we like to do is to do research and find out. This was invented by Edwin Bott in the 50s. And um, he died before they were fully implemented on the roads, but he'd be a very rich man today. Very uh, cool. They're called Edwin, bot, bot they're, dots. They're, they're called bot dots. Bot dots. And so we have a whole little collection wow. of bot dots. So these are pretty common that bot you find. Dots pieces. Yeah. yeah. Wow. As for the camera here. <laughs> and you'll see, if you, go, if you stop along the freeway, you'll see these all over the place on the freeway. Interesting. Obviously. Now, how about the second piece? What do you think yeah. of the second piece? Do you, do you have a guess what it might we're, be? We're getting a close Any inspection over there? here. Any idea what it is? From, From a, a shoe? shoe? That's, a, that's okay. a good guess. Any yeah. others? Do you have a guess over here? A toy, maybe? Okay. Let's see. Our, our later archived audience, what do you all think? Hmm. Okay. So what is this? Okay. Well, we brought a bag full of these, and these are bottle bottoms. Here's another. See the, see the shape of this? You can see the crease, the fold. It... We think it's because that area of this looks like maybe from a bleach bottle that the area is reinforced. There's extra plastic, so perhaps the bottle itself crumbles away, and we're just left with the bottle bottom. So we, from shampoo bottles, and what else you got there? Here's oh, a bottle this is bottle. an oil bottle. Interesting. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't. Oh, so the. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Ah, uh, so... So uh -huh. you're saying you watched a, a video or a documentary about how, how plastic reflattens and... Wow. Yeah. Well, it's a problem. Oh, into a form. So they're showing kind of how it's manufactured then. Feel free to come join us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so all these kinds of plastics, they do break down and they make some pretty uh, good material, unfortunately, for you to use. At least you are using it for this artwork. Um, and that experiment of making these into those really big pieces here for our Built for Speed, process went into that. I mean, all those little pieces 
Uh, what went into making those kiosks? Well, the, um, the, the one that's about plastic, you'll see that the plastic wraps around. And we wanted to give the feeling of a sail and of speed. And so both of us um, have done a lot of sculptural work. And not particularly with plastic, but just traditional sculptural materials. But you can see how those, when you go and look at the exhibit, you'll see how they wrap around and they have the feeling of kind of embracing you in plastic because we're all embraced by plastic. It's everywhere. Um, you start to when you start to notice uh, plastic in the world, you'll see it's absolutely everywhere. And we, the, uh, yeah. we, I was going to say we knew that the the actual work to accomplish this task because we were given first little sketches on the computer and they're quite small. But then when we encountered the awesome <laughs> size of these ten feet structures, we knew wow, we were really in for something. We had the good fortune of working with the eco-team groups here at the academy. We brought in big bins of plastic all mixed up, and they helped us, first of all, to sort the plastic according to color and kind in preparation for the work. And then they actually helped us to glue the pieces of plastic onto the armature itself. So how many hours of work would that be? Oh. A million. <laughs> a million. Yeah. A million bazillion hours of work. <laughs> and the other thing they helped us with, the the uh, one that has to do with the toxic uh, liquids going into the drain, going down the drain, they also helped cut all the drips. There were many, many drips to be hand cut. I'm sure. It, yeah, a lot, a lot for two people to handle. Um, and these cans here, so if you look into the seafood savvy, where, did you... Uh, relabel and recycle all those cans we, yourself. We did. We, we did. did. I had a bonanza day at Whole Foods, and I was able to uh, get a whole bunch of cans from their recycling uh, place there. Nice. The little dumpster diving. The little dumpster diving. Okay, absolutely. Very cool. Dumpster diving. And then uh, Richard really was the driving force in the redesign of the labels. We wanted to bring in some good, good humor and a little messaging about how to make to empower people to make wise choices about the food, their food consumption. Indeed. This is a little bit different than other projects you've done. Um, what have you learned from working with uh, the Academy or working on these projects as opposed to ones that you sort of picked yourself? Well, we've learned a lot about how to be seafood savvy. And their, uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium has a seafood watch list, which I encourage you to look at before you buy something to eat that's been in the ocean. Um, and the motto, one of the can labels says, um, seafood is sea life. And that's something to really remember when you're thinking about eating, um, eating seafood. And one of, the, one of the issues that we encounter is a thing called bycatch. So for example, when shrimp is fished in big nets, uh, sometimes the amount of seafood that's thrown away or sea life that's thrown away is 20 to 1. So when you're eating a little shrimp, you're throwing away 20 other little creatures. Right. And the cool thing about that, that system, the Seafood Watch program, is picking the right ones is putting your vote towards people who are doing a really good job. So this, I guess the hope for these action kiosks is that they're presenting and sort of a an artistic way, some of these issues that are really important, but that everyone can get involved with in pretty pretty easy ways. And as artists, one of the great things was actually working with academy scientists and staff to help clarify not only our artistic vision, but how do we really present this information in a way that's viewer-friendly, that's kid-friendly, that will add a little bright color and a kind of a different interpretation, bringing an artistic vision into the mix. And, and it's been a real great learning experience for us. There are little us. jokes hidden in the can. Yeah. So if you look at the one, the orange can says penultimate salmon. So who knows what penultimate means? We wanted to put a little asterisk and have you look it up. But penultimate means, the ultimate, of course, is the final. Penultimate is... The one that's right before the final. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of people don't know what that okay. word means, so that's been really, really fun. <laughs> so people kind of going in and maybe getting some curiosity about the subject. Exactly. And, exactly. Yeah. and the same thing with the, with the big pieces of plastic. Um, it's been really rewarding to watch people, young pe people of all ages, come up and look at the pla They At first, they're really intrigued. It's so beautiful. The colors are great. <clears throat> and then they get closer and they start to 
oh my gosh, there's a toothbrush, or they, they begin yeah. to recognize things from their own everyday lives, and and that kind of that aha, watching that aha moment come, right. come into play. Oh, that was mine. That was <laughs> mine. Oh, no. That's where that thing went. <laughs> yeah, and it definitely brings to light where where is a way with the throw away, away is an actual place, which is something that I think that's one of your quotes yeah. that I lifted. I completely stole it from you, <laughs> but um, I've been, it's been it's a good before. one for yeah. education. Cool. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you both for being here. And um, I don't know if you have time or if you would be interested to see the exhibit a little bit closer. Do you have a little bit of a moment to walk sure. over there? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure that would, can be. Yeah. Would you better. like to come with us over to the exhibit to check it out? Would that be cool? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, Thanks we're going to say goodbye to the camera. We're going to go to the exhibit now. But uh, thank you, viewers, for all of your support and checking out Chat with Academy Scientists. And thank you all for coming and learning with us. And thanks for being our guest. Thank you. Thank you.